What's cracking y'all? I just wanna do a quick little video because today was really interesting. Chuck came up to me and said, dude, did you hear the news? And I was like, no, I didn't. And he said, Nestle bought Blue Bottle Coffee. Then I saw something pop up on Sprudge and I think it's something a lot of people are gonna be talking about. And even some of my employees asked what I thought about it. So here are my thoughts about it. First, I'm not really surprised that someone bought a majority stake in Blue Bottle. They've already had a couple different rounds of funding. I think the first was around 25 million and then the second biggest one was 70 million. So it looked like they were on track to sell or do something really, really huge. At first, I was surprised to hear that Nestle bought Blue Bottle. But then it kind of started to make sense. Nestle is the largest buyer of coffee in the world. Now they're not really known for specialty coffee or being in the same market as Blue Bottle. So it's probably a really awesome acquisition for them to bolster their brand. Maybe not bolster their brand. I doubt they're gonna be cohabitating brands, but maybe just kind of dip their toe in the water of specialty coffee. Depending on where you're reading, it seems like they're gonna be paying about $500 million for roughly 68% of a $700 million valuation. So first things first, James Freeman, CEO. Dude, congratulations, that's super awesome. James has been in the game for a really, really long time. I remember visiting the Hayes Valley kiosk, and I think it's awesome that someone can take something that's just an idea that they're really passionate about, grow it, grow it big enough to where people start to take notice, grow it big enough to where people wanna give you millions of dollars, and then hundreds of millions of dollars for it, and then ultimately, over like 500 millions of dollars. I, I think that's crazy and I think that's awesome. And I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of feelings both ways, but one thing that I've always admired about James and I've always admired about Blue Bottle is they know their clientele and they know their aesthetic and they stay true to that no matter what's happening in the industry. And I think that's huge because you see a lot of brands, a lot of newer brands really running around trying to chase the dragon, find out what's on trend, copy that, and then in a couple of years, it ends up being dated, maybe not on trend anymore, or it's just not really the authentic version of your company. So I've always admired Blue Bottle's kind of, we know who we are, we're gonna do it. Maybe we're not playing with the rest of the industry, and that's totally fine. Second thing, investments like this aren't really new to the specialty coffee industry. Over the past several years, there's been a few really well-known brands that have been acquired by bigger holding companies. Most notably, JAB Holding Company comes to mind. JAB's portfolio includes Stumptown Coffee, Intelligentsia Coffee, Pete's Coffee, and Curry Green Mountain Coffees, and also Mighty Leaf Tea, which while it isn't coffee, it's kind of associated. Those are just a few tidbits for perspective that this isn't really anything that's super new. And again, whether you like it or not, I think those acquisitions are testaments to the brands that have been built that have high quality and also large mass market appeal. So what feelings am I having? I think overall this is a good thing because to me it shows the potential that the specialty coffee industry has. For so long there's been these really small businesses that are kind of fighting and clawing for awareness and we've really had to pitch like why we're different than your standard big box commodity coffee. And we're finally starting to reach enough people to where bigger corporations or people who want to make money off the movement think that it's a viable business model. Aside from these acquisitions, you've got people like McDonald's promoting specialty coffee in their own Mick Cafe brand. They've got heavy marketing around it. I'm gonna link a video below that I think is the most hilarious thing ever. And it's funny because we were talking five years ago, eight years ago, and leaders of the industry legitimately thought that the specialty coffee market was flooded and there wasn't gonna be any room for any more high-end specialty roasters, the third wave movement was dead and it was all gonna go away because there were just too many companies controlling too much, but we really hadn't reached a large audience at all. We were reaching such a small sector of the population. And even with this stuff becoming more and more and more popular, if I think about all the people I know, all the people I'm related to, all the people in my family, and think about the kinds of coffee that they drink, I'm probably one of the only people in my entire family that drinks specialty coffee. So there's a whole world out there, there's a whole market out there waiting to be captured, and more importantly, waiting to be introduced to really good coffee. And I think this is cool, because I think of how much a really awesome cup of coffee and a really awesome customer service interaction at the beginning of the day impacts the rest of my day, and I think that's power. I think baristas have that power to shape someone's day, get someone psyched, so the more good coffee that we can get in more people's hands, I'm pretty pumped about that. Woo, world's gonna be a better place. Making broad claims. So if you own a small business like I do, or you are a neighborhood coffee shop, 
I'd encourage you to think about this as just a sign that there is a market for you. There's a ton of people waiting to be introduced for specialty coffee and there is a place for you. The caveat is, can we as small business owners compete in quality and customer service? Honestly, the thing that I see lacking in most of the small shops is the guest experience. Bigger companies have a lot of systems that help them out and I think it's time that we take notice of this. We need to take notice of speed of service. We need to take notice of how we're treating people when they come in the door. That was a fucking tangent, dude. Also, a couple people asked me today, would you sell out if it meant that you had all of your retirement, all your houses, everything dialed millions and millions of dollars? What I initially said was yes, given two conditions. One was we have to be able to keep all of our existing employees and bring them with us wherever we may go and make sure whatever buyout we got helped everybody. Since most of our company is really based around growth and our employees and providing opportunity for people, it would be really crappy to sell cash out and just live in a mansion and have all the people that we employ just be like, Cool, now what? The second thing would be no non-compete clause. So if I could take all those people, turn right around and start something else again and use that money as leverage to go even bigger, even harder, even gnarlier, I would probably do that. At least that's what I said. And then the more I thought about it, the more I started thinking about the Cat and Cloud brand and I started thinking about the logo and I started thinking about how cool it is and I started thinking about how attached I was to it and then I started thinking about how much history it has, and then about an hour later, I really wasn't sure. It's not even really a thing because we're not even close to that size, popularity, reach, market scope, don't know what our valuation would even be. We've got two stores and a little roastery. But if someone wanted to give us millions and millions and millions of dollars and we could use that money to help the people that are helping us grow right now and continue on that journey with them, I think I would do it. But of course, no one would give you money if you're gonna take everything you built with them, so it's not really a thing. So maybe I guess I couldn't sell anything ever. I don't know. I don't know. I truly have a dream that we'll build a successful enough business to where if we get to the size of when we'd actually be able to talk about selling, that we would be making more than enough money already and we wouldn't need to sell for hundreds of millions of dollars. We would have fun doing what we love. We'd be running a profitable business and still be able to invest a lot into our employees and growing people. And we just wouldn't need to sell for 500 millions of dollars. And if we wanted to retire, we could retire and just pull money out of the business. And everybody who built the organization with us could take over ownership, something like that. That's what I really, really dream of. And I don't wanna speak for Jared or Charles, but I know they're along the same lines. Plus I'm such a huge fan of the underdog and it really impresses me when people do more with less, that moves my soul a lot more than when people with a lot of money do really crazy big things. Again, maybe that's not completely fair because a lot of the big people started small and I respect that. So again, Blue Bottle got bought. I think it's an awesome thing for specialty coffee. I think James and the whole Blue Bottle crew should be proud of themselves that they created something worth buying. And that's rad. I'd love to know what you think. It's like a pretty fun topic to talk about and just kick around. Had fun chatting with you guys about it. So. Stay dialed, y'all, and I will catch you on the flip side. Peace.